We have encountered other Creative Campus Fellows, Jill Sigmund, Eiko Otake, Rindy Eckert, among others. Um, but this year what it means is that Faye is here to do research on her upcoming work, uh, Thank You for Coming Play, and she's going to tell you about that. And what that means is, is she's going to be working with faculty in many different disciplines to inform her thinking, while at the same time teaching a class where she will actually have her students be research assistants. Um, really think of it as a research and development lab for her uh, material that she will then take back to her company periodically and um, I'm sure she'll be telling you about the, uh, the process. But this is a wonderful collaboration between the dance department and the Center for the Arts and I'm grateful for the, to the dance faculty for um, working with us to design this fellowship <coughs> so that it enriches the curriculum as well as helps a generative artist uh, in their path to make a new work. So um, it's really exciting to have, uh, have you meet her. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Faye so you have uh, some background. Um, first, uh, a quote from uh, Rosalind Sulkis of the New York Times. Ms. Driscoll is fascinating in that she makes such utterly original work. It doesn't look like anything you've ever seen before, nor can you imagine thinking it up. A wild woman with a scrupulous sense of form that she tweaks into eye-opening weirdness. Ferocious, hilarious, and disturbing. Uh, she uh, went, uh, was, was born in Venice Beach, Los Angeles. Um, and then in 94, she moved to New York to attend the Tisch School at NYU. Uh, there she began a five-year collaboration with Israeli choreographer Yasmin Goddard, performing her searing and personally excavating work in New York, Prague, and Belgrade. From 97 to 99, she danced for David Newman, who, if you know, is just this genius of dance theater. He's a professor at Sarah Lawrence College, and, and we're all a great fan of his at the CFA. And uh, she worked uh, in assisting him uh, in his collaboration with Mikhail Baryshnikov. Then she danced with Doug Verone and dancers. Many of you saw Doug's work last year. Again, another great uh, friend of the dance department and the Center for the Arts. Uh, then in 2003, she moved to San Francisco where she found herself in a scene of artists, writers, and musicians who helped open her up, uh, open up her ideas around performance and its rules. Having worked professionally for many years at this point, she was eager to recapture the feeling that made her want to dance as a kid. She uh, still returns to this spirit today and hopes to inspire it in her audiences. She's collaborated extensively with theater artists, including young Jean Lee, um, if you know Young Jean's uh, current work, uh, what, Straight White Men, um, Faye was a choreographer, fight director for that. She was also in um, the feminist, uh, Untitled, Feminist Show. Untitled Feminist Show. So uh, those of you who heard Young Jean Lee speak here three years ago, uh, heard about the making of this piece and of um, Straight White Men, and I just, I, I can't wait to see it at some point. I think it's so cool. So um, I think uh, I'll just uh, turn it over to, to uh, Faye, and we hope that at the end of the semester there will be a showing of work. Um, I think we have a date for that, but we'll let you know so that you can see uh, the fruits of um, Faye's research at the end. We'll have some kind of a showing. So with that, Faye Driscoll. Thank you so much. I'm so happy and honored to be here. And thank you, Pam and Erin. Um, thank you, the Mellon Foundation. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you, the professors that I've talked to thus far, who have been really um, stimulating and interesting. And I feel um, excited to be here in such a generous context where I can really use this um, time as a research laboratory for my work and process and um, active, act actively engage in all the resources here. So thank you. Um, so I'm a choreographer, uh, but I do often have people come up to me after shows and say, Faye, hey, I loved your play. Um, so I feel like my work is living in this kind of hybrid space, um, dance, theater, performance, installation. And uh, although dance is my background, I trained in it for many, many years. Um, and it's, um, I think I, my strategies are choreographic. Um, I think if you see my work, it might not look like what you would think of when you think of a, the word dance. Um, and I think a lot of contemporary artists are working um, in that way today. Um, I'd say that 
One of the primary concerns in my work is something that I call the problem of being somebody in a world of other somebodies. Um, this uh, somebodiness um, that comes into uh, existence in social relations, a kind of co-emergent performance of self and other. Um, and the kind of way that that is slippery, um, the way I'm a different person right now, or my voice is a certain way, and my face is moving a certain way, and my hands are gesturing a certain way in front of you all in this forum, in this stage that we're in here, versus how I might talk with my mom, or uh, my partner, or um, the kind of uh, forced laughter I might have the guy I always talk to at the deli. Uh, so um, it's that kind of emergent moment where who I am comes into existence um, in this sociality and that dance of that, the I think Judith Butler says the improvisation within a scene of constraint. <laughs> so that kind of thing is what I'm I think most obsessed with and fascinated by. Um, and um, yeah, and the ways that that changes my breath and voice and psychological state, emotional state, and physicality. Um, and I think th of performance as a place in which that um, dance, that kind of mirroring, that co-emergent performance uh, is heightened, um, is very accessible and palpable. And um, I have a lot of different formal strategies that I use to play inside of that dance. Um, one main one is to kind of blow it up. So to bring things out to their extreme, um, awkwardness, loneliness, humor, fantasy, uh, failed attempts, and, and to make them um, live in excess through rhythm, repetition, through size, through um, having the pulling out the edges that are sublime and the edges that are abject, through duration, stretching something out through time where you feel it and experience it in a very different way than you might in those sort of micro moments. And feeling inside those micro moments what is um, archetypal, um, what is mythical, um, and sort of con uh, often constantly playing back between detail and grand gesture in my work. Um, so one example of a practice that I've used that deals with this is um, I was making an evening length duet with um, me and this person called Jesse Zaret. And one of the um, things that we tried to do in it was to become each other. It's called Your Me, and um, we tried to see if we could become each other, this impossible task. And we did this really extended, long mirroring exercise where we were, um, I was attempting to become him, and he was attempting to become me for over an hour. And we went through fits of hysterical laughter. We went through all kinds of different feelings and places. And after a while, when you're trying to become someone, and they're trying to become you, there's this like re refraction that happens, and a kind of third character emerged. And we called that character Chad. It was this person that was neither him nor me, but was Chad. And we called the whole exercise chatting. So, um, Chad as in the name Chad, not chat. And so I think of chatting as like the ultimate state that I would like to create with the audience. Um, and so another, I guess another strategy that I often use in my work is um, familiar, familiarity, using things that are familiar and rep maybe even representational image, scene, emotional state that you could identify or relate to. And you might see it and go, oh, I know what's going on. Like, I know who those people are, or I get it. I get it. What's going on here is this. And then to flip things on their head in some way um, through, through layering, um, through how things play out over time, uh, so that there's a dislocation between between the known and the unknown. So there's a disorientation or a questioning, a subversion of expectation, uh, or like again, a kind of third thing between two familiar things. So um, my hope in this is that there's like, I think I'm wanting more space. <laughs> I'm wanting more space for uh, different 
for different ways of being, both in myself and in the world. And there's something about trying to create a container that pushes up against the edges um, of so social options. Um, so I guess that brings me to the piece that I'm researching here and that I've been working on already for the past two years. It's called Thank You For Coming. And um, it's a series of works. It's iterative. Um, I already made the first part, and now I'm here working on the second part. And uh, thank you for coming as I think taking this question, this chatting, <laughs> this uh, how we are co-creating the world, maybe whether we like it or not, together all the time, it, in attempting to make a performance in which the audience feels even more that co-creation and that culpability and is therefore participatory. And um, I think all performance work is participatory. Um, this is just something where I'm trying to push that push the envelope on that further. And one of the questions that I kind of came up for me in starting this work is, how is my work socially and politically engaged? And how is it already? And how could it be more? When I was a kid, I was very political. I wrote a lot of poems. I did a lot of performances. <laughs> I um, went to protests. Um, I really believe that if I could just make this like art piece that grabbed my cat and a pot from the kitchen and whatever, that I could change the world, you know, and then slowly that, um, you know, I became jaded and adulted and that went away <laughs> and also became professionalized, I think. So, um, I think I'm, as a lot of been asking the question of what takes my beliefs into action. You know, I feel it really hard to make changes in my life, like even to stop using plastic bags. Um, I really believe in stopping using plastic bags, but the the, the dissonance and distance often between, um, yeah, bef between belief and action, and um, I feel like dance is a place in which we do quite radical enactment. Um, dance for me is a place where I spend, you know, hours barefoot in a room with other people. And that just, that doesn't happen that much. We don't spend hours in rooms with other people <laughs> that much these days. So it feels like it already is this quite radical thing. Um, so anyway, my intention was to push that further, to ask those questions and to make a series of works that would engage the audience um, in that question. and. I, I'll say that I really am uncomfortable with participatory work. Um, I don't even like that word that much. Um, I don't like it when I'm at a show and I get called out. Um, <laughs> I don't like being coerced. Um, so I had a big, huge, it's, for me it was a scary, very scary thing to make one myself. And I was really afraid I would fall in to like, hey everybody clap your hands. Or like, you know, kumbaya. Or some kind of trope that I was like, oh god, that would be so horrible. But I would say that that's something that also drives me as an artist, is doing those things that I feel will be horrible. And finding out and failing and or succeeding or whatever, not even working within those constructs, but like carving out something unsettling and new for myself. Um, so I think all I'll do is just start to show you some of the um, first part of Thank You For Coming, so you can get a sense of that. I can uh, talk a lot, but I think the visual will say a lot more. Um, so Eric, will you? The section that I'm going to show you is, we, I call it the tangle. It's uh, performers are connected physically for um, about 20 minutes. Um, and it was this very literal way of, uh, while Eric tries to work out the video, I'll just chat a little bit. Uh, it was a literal way of trying to bring people together to make something bigger than the sum of their parts. Um, and to have these individuals create this kind of group body while simultaneously maintaining their own unique individuality. And, and it's a lot, it was a lot of negotiation. It's a lot of cause and effect negotiation because the dancers a lot of the time had to be like, well, if I move my arm connected to you, then I hurt this person down here. So there was a lot of in the room literally having to negotiate and work out like 
how to work together on this. Um, and a lot of the inspiration for this came from looking at roots of trees, dishes piled in my sink, um, demolished buildings, um, kind of like unstable, stable structures. And um, the way we're kind of pulling the audience in in this is through gaze and heightened proximity and eventually touch. We're on a platform and the audience is sitting around, as you can see, so that's seen from all sides. And um, it's very much crafted for each side differently. So if you're on one side, you might see something totally different than the person across from you. And you're also always seeing that they're seeing something different. from the platforms and their feet on the platform. A lot of the impact of this, I think, comes from its duration, in part, um, because uh, there's a very visceral um, potential kind of empathy from watching the labor that has to go on for, for these performers. And um, 
The performers that I work with are, um, I really work with them as whole human beings. They're never just like bodies in space to me. Um, I'm really interested in their fully embodied intelligence and I really demand a lot from them. Um, physically, psychologically, um, the, often the notes I'm giving are functioning on those levels. Physical, psychological, image, emotion, uh, vocal, detail. So they're, um, yeah, they're kind of holding a lot at once. And I'm, I'm interested in this kind of presence, that in demanding a kind of embodied presence that I think, um, I guess it just really excites me to see another human being <laughs> in that state. Um, there's something that relates to an ecstatic state to it. Um, there's something that I think maybe is a kind of, um, creates a possibility in terms of that mirroring, seeing a other human being have that kind of spectrum of experience in performance, um, I think does good for chatting. <laughs> um, so, oh yeah, and the other thing I thought about a lot in this was spectrum and punctum. I think that's a phot photographic way of looking at things, but that you would might at once see the whole tableau and then you would see like, you'd be really drawn in by like this one person in the back and them making eye contact with you. So, to, and um, the kind of perceptual layeredness of that while knowing that the other people on the other side are seeing something else, while that you know that they're seeing you. So I was really interested in that kind of um, holding all those perceptions at once. I'm gonna kind of speed forward. I just wanna kind of walk through this next part. Um, actually, let me go to. Eventually come into contact with the audience. <laughs> I have no idea why they're laughing. <laughs> um, and then uh, slowly the performers roll off the stage into the audience, kind of start to push them back. And then slowly they roll back the other way and they remove what was the stage, this canvas, and I'm under there. <laughs> and um, uh, so the stage becomes the seating. Um, and throughout the work I play this kind of role of director slash laborer. Um, and the performers change clothing with the help of the audience. And um, the audience eventually helps me also set up the seating for the next act of the show. And they're also given props and costumes to wear or hold for us. Um, and then this sec next section is called the stop action section because it's all in stop action. Um, I'll just show the beginning and then... Okay. <laughs> 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 
Is that the performers pass through um, kind of ask them to think about different times in their lives and we made them from different points in their life the inspiration for this was thinking about um, how in ritual there's always rhythm, there's often rhythm, there's often like a drummer, um, there's often a, a, a steady rhythm that helps take people somewhere and so in my looking for this contemporary versions of that, I wanted the rhythm to come from the performers and to, for it to be felt um, very physically. And um, of course, looking at like gifts and um, vines and, and loading. Um, and also playing again with, the th with at once the thing, like the representation of the hello, hey, and the... Um, and the labor of the thing, and the, the notness of the thing. Um, and this goes on again for a while. They sing every single person's name in the audience. Um, and it, again, it's the labor and the duration, I think, that has, for me, one of the biggest impacts. I'm just going to speed forward again.
closet there again. So then this moves into the final, oh, the next section, which I, we call the many shows. And uh, what happens is the performers start to do very uh, discreet little performances for each side of the room. Um, the lights shift, so they're all on that one side. And everyone who you know was given a prop or a, a costume item is um, often um, then suddenly the background actor to the show. Um, once again, for the other side, they're in the back, they're backstage, perhaps. Um, so uh, it starts to kind of do this even more. And I'm just gonna speed forward. <laughs> the audience becomes more and more players in the show. So this goes on, I'm drawing lines across the space. Um, I forgot to say that myself and all of the tech folk are wearing these uh, super long tights <laughs> that get then stretched out by, with the aid of audience members. I'm gonna kind of speed forward. And we again, again become a kind of group body, but this time um, every end of the tights or various fabrics are connected to the audience. Um, so we become this sort of amoebic mob again. Connected to the audience. And then what we build together is this kind of
performers begin this very simple dance inside of it. They're just skipping in and out and then around in a circle. And it starts to accumulate, so I join, the entire tech crew joins. The sound designer joins. So eventually we invite the audience in. And um, it was really important that no one felt coerced. So I just said, you're free to skip. Would you, would you like to skip? You don't have to. And in this, this is in New York. So um, I was pretty happy with how many, night to night it would change. But, um, you know, by the end, we often had at least half, some nights three quarters of the audience up. And that's where the piece ends. So this was the sort of strategies that we developed with the last piece, starting kind of through the senses in a way, through gaze, through touch, through the seating that you're in, the set that you're in, um, transforming that, making that familiar thing, that familiar tropes that you will expect when you're in a theater a little different. Uh, and then through the autobiography that happens through hearing your own name and the history that comes into the room when you hear your own name. Uh, and then through these small ways where I think are a bit more manageable to participate, like holding something, helping change clothing, <laughs> helping, you know, hold something, um, to where I think uh, eventually a lot of people felt uh, ready and actually desiring to join at the end. So, um, the, the next project that I'm working on is kind of going at this same concept, but dealing with it more through um, a kind of dance drama, like a kind of narrative narrative structure, and working with uh, much more with the ways we create meaning and belief. Um, I like to say we make belief, we make believe, and um, so that's that second one is what I'm in the midst of very early stages of researching here and will premiere um, likely in 2000, late 2015, early 2016. And um, I'll be workshopping, I've been having tons of really great dialogues with narrative theory and religion and um, American studies and talking about sound and the voice and um, and uh, yeah, so this was it'll be the kind of laboratory for me to workshop the next iteration. And I think I want to end there and just kind of open it up. Um, actually, no, I know what I want to do. Could everybody please, if you feel comfortable, put your book aside and just stand up for a moment? It's very simple. Um, practice I wanted to share with you that probably a lot of you who are in the performance dance department maybe are engaged with. Um, but if you could just leave your stuff and just take a walk around this space, just ambulate. Um, <laughs> and it can be around over here, or it can be like through the aisles. You can move through it maybe like, you know, without, um, without trying to get anywhere, just kind of moving through it. And then I'd just like you to, I'd like you to call your attention to um, your sight. So just notice how you're already seeing. Um, and you're seeing, maybe play with seeing quite close. So seeing things very near to you, like your own body or objects very close. And then you can play with seeing things at a mid-range. So, you know, a little bit further, maybe it's another person across the space or, um, the, somewhere in the room, that's just the, the mid-range. Yeah. 
and now try the long distance, so seeing far. We don't really have so many windows. Maybe you can look out a window, or maybe you can imagine that you could kind of see into the next room or out through the campus, so that kind of long distance gaze, like you're looking on a horizon. Good, and now I just want you to sort of just take note of the little bits of um, eye contact that you're already making, likely just to be able to negotiate the room together. And just like notice, notice what your um, face does. Notice, um, you know, if you smile or like, I might try and make people feel comfortable, so I'd probably smile or, or maybe you don't, maybe you try not to move your face, maybe you avoid it. <laughs> And just letting yourself sort of be aware of that and, and play with that. <laughs> and then I'd just like to invite you to also um, notice other people's dance of that. So this act of seeing and being seen. Beautiful. And now you can just stop for a moment wherever you are, close your eyes, drop that, and just feel the little, like, um, feel what that little dance felt like, the seeing and being seen dance. How it might still be resonating, Thank you so much. This is a practice we do a lot, and um, one of the ways to get at just an embodiment of the things I've been blabbing about. Thank you. So I think we'll just open up for discussion. Anyone who wants to ask questions? Um, wow, I could just say the tone in the room is so different right now, so thank you so much for doing that. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Anything they wanted to kind of go deeper into that I brought up or, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I totally, I get that question so much because it, it's like, it's, um, there's such a state of spontaneity inside it, and um, I really, I think that every performance is improvisational, no matter how set. Um, and I think a lot of perform um, people who perform improvisation are really radically working on that practice of um, making as they perform. Um, this is very set, um, but every night there's, newness and there's room within it but for the most part it's pretty meticulously built I have found when I've tried to leave I um, have things I want very specifically to happen and it's such a labor to make them happen um, that if we don't really go through a process around that that it yeah it just there's a potential it could go really wrong for me because I'm playing with such tenuous things sometimes. Yeah, that's, I, I wouldn't say that I know exactly how my work is, is political. I think that that question was driving me and I think I'm still figuring that out. Um, I think for me it really has to do with this idea that what makes us participate, that for me is, is driving it, like what is the difference between me doing 
something? <laughs> what makes me join or uh, make that change? Because again, I feel such frustration around really being able to make changes in my own life or getting out of the mode of like being really career oriented or being really, you know, like driven to do my amb ambitious projects. And like, you know, I, um, so I feel like I was thinking like if, can performance be a metaphorical space for the formation of society? So if people were willing to get up and join in this, maybe they'd be willing to get up in other ways. I guess that, that would be. But I think that the reason it's a series is because it is such a big question and it's really still forming. Yeah, um, and I was, I think, most struck sort of uh, this amazingly moving performance that manages not to be corny, and yet it sort of co-builds a shelter and, you know, it has everyone circling around in a folk dance. Um, it is really remarkable, and I think part, I was wondering, for me, I felt like part of the reason it managed to do that was the moments of failure and frustration and difficulty and I was wondering this is a very particular question but maybe you can branch off this the the moment where uh, the dancers are saying go Aaron go Aaron go Sean go Sean and then they morph into saying come on and nothing happens and they're like haranguing the audience and nothing happens and that really that really struck me and I wondered if that was something you focused on or worked on and in incorporating moments of difficulty into your work Um, yes, yes, I think a lot of, we talked a lot about labor, we talked a lot about difficulty, we talked a lot about failure, we talked a lot about um, making that process visible, um, and um, that, that particular moment where we sort of like go from everyone in the room to this one person and then sort of back out again, um, I feel like it's a, it's a, it, in the way that they're performing and the way that we talked about it, we tried to have it be at once this like internal frustration with themselves, um, with their exhaustion, with the audience, like a call, a call to arms, like come on, let's do this. And at once an ambiguous kind of what, we're not sure, um, join us, we're trying. Um, so yeah, that all that is in that moment. Sometimes people joined in the come on, and uh, when we did it in, um, we did it at a place called Mass Live Arts in Great Barrington, and it was just such a warm audience, and people did stand, and that's something that we were like, well, what do we do with them then, you know? <laughs> so I feel like we do have, the, and in this piece in general, because the audience is different every night, we do have this kind of like, okay, so that could happen, and you know, how, how does the piece have to shift for that, or allow that? Mm -hmm. Well, if you have a certain New York Times critic come to your show and write about it, then you can't avoid it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think it's written in the it's written in the description. It's not written. We avoided that word very much. Um, um, it was asking those questions, and then you come in and you're you ask, we ask you to remove your shoes and your coat. It was the winter, and um, you come into this space and you sit. And I think there's the feeling that this is you know maybe going to be, but we try to avoid too much of that anxiety creating. Um, it was just interesting because after like a review came out that really described it, the audience came the next night and they were like. You know, and so, but it was good for us. It was interesting because we were like, okay, this is, because the rest of the nights they were just kind of like, okay, what, we don't know. But that night they were like, don't even touch me. I'm not taking off my high heels. And, um, but it became really an, another interesting kind of friction that we worked with. Um, Their, um, how they would voice their experience. 
I mean, do you just take from it what you see them doing or saying or smiling or growling? Or, or is there a discussion afterwards to give you feedback uh, that helps you in your process for going further with this? Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of feedback after... Um, most of it, we did a lot of test audiences before leading up to the show. So that was a very like immediate back and forth dialogue. How was this? How was this? How did you feel about this? Did this alienate you? What, what, you know, how would it, was it to have someone come into your space in that way? Um, and got all the kind of gamut of responses. We went through several phases where we were like way too nice. We were like, hey, would you mind? And that was bad. And then phases where we were like a little too like <clears throat> like a, almost a vi like a kind of aggressiveness because a performer automatically is in a power position in that way. So we just really worked on the kind of finding the right tone. And then once we got into the performances, it was much more informal feedback that we were getting, um, which is mixed. But a, a lot of it was overwhelmingly positive in terms of the experience, but it's always going to be mixed. Oh. You just you and then you. Hoffman made a comment about the audience laughing during the performance. Um, did you intend for the humor, or was that, um, I couldn't tell if you were being sarcastic or not. Did you, how did you feel with the audience finding the humor in that? Um, I, I, no, I really love humor. I think it's really powerful. I think it's a that there's an opening that happens in it. I have found in my performances people laugh so much that sometimes I'm like, are they getting it? Like, because it's like, it's not just like, ha, 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 you know? So there's a way that sometimes I'm like, well, there's been audiences that are dead silent and that's actually also really interesting to me because once one person laughs and then everyone laughs and then there's, there is a whole part of the audience that's not laughing but you're only hearing the people that are laughing. So I, I don't know, I, I love humor and I feel good that they're laughing, but I also sort of, I think laughter serves so many functions, just uncomfort and like, you know, so um, I also in that moment just couldn't see what they were looking at. You know, it's probably one of the performers like playing with someone's shoe or something. Talked about how like they feel like it's very personal with the performers, you know, because it's psychological, emotional, and everyone's very open. And I guess something that stuck out to me in the tangle was that one performer with red hair. She kept trying to like kind of I took it as her breaking free, like her trying to like escape almost. So I was wondering like, are there sort of like individual arcs? And if so, like are they characters in those? Are they themselves? Are they are they versions of themselves? I guess this is coming from a more maybe theatric perspective. Um, yeah, we talk a lot about um, we talk a lot about image. Um, there's a couple of people in this piece who are their background is acting training, and so they they do come at it more from that perspective. But they like find their own thread through it. Um, I kind of feel like it's definitely more along the like we contain multitudes thing. Like it's a lot at once, and um, it's it's like playing with this kind of constant morphing between states. Um, and in that, there's very specific. Uh, at one point, it looks like there's they're like a couple at the prom, and this you know her foot's on someone's head, and that. So we played with a sort of a layering of images. Um, I wouldn't say there's like a, you know, an objective or something like that going on inside of it. Yeah. Aside from the kind of everyone getting behind the bigger ideas in the work. One more. I'm really curious about is your decision to leave up until the guitar came in to only use sound that was generated by the performers themselves. I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about that decision. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wanted actually the whole show to be sound only generated by the performers or live, and at the end we break that. Um, but I was really interested in that. Um, resonance of sound and um, I think that that's something that's in a lot of contemporary work actually and it's it does help with that, that seeing of the labor and feeling the the body in the space with you and that thing that we were on became a real instrument 
So we really crafted that as the in instrument. Like they're aware that when they do this with their foot that we've like we've talked about the various sounds that they could make. And, and I think sound continues to be something that, um, in, especially in this next piece, um, that I'm wanting to develop even more and really fascinated by, and really fascinated by the impact of sound on our bodies. So, yeah. Right, I think maybe that will end there. Thank you all so much. Thank you.